Jordan River. saints and welcome welcome once again friends good morning mom mwah, mwah, mwah. good morning to all of the beautiful ladies all of our mothers and soon-to-be mothers I want to say happy Mother's Day I know the world is celebrating y'all today and so and it's only right that we do because you were deserving so I want to say happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers on today. Uh, good morning, Chuck. Love you, bruh. Good morning, Mike, Pokey, Tony, Terry. Good morning. Good morning, Brother Curry, Brother Roney. Good morning, Sister Arnita. Good morning, Sister Sybil, Sister Sybil. Good morning, Sister uh, Lindsay, Sister Cat. Good morning, Sister Cat. Mariah, good morning. Miss Sonia, good morning to you. Uh, good morning to Miss Sheila. Good morning to Miss Linda. My friend, Mr. Brown, Mr. Brown, good morning, good sir. Good morning to you. Uh, my friend, Fernando, good morning, Fernando. Uh, good morning, Brother Marshall and, and Brother Daryl. Good morning, Daryl. Good morning, Brother Burrell, Sister Simantia, Sister Janelle, Sister Darlene. Good morning to the beautiful Lyde family. I want to say good morning to you on today. Friends, too many, so many. Uh, Chikozi, Chikozi. Good morning, Chikozi. Uh, hope you're watching us on today. Uh, always a pleasure to have you with us. Uh, Brother Harmon, good morning to my friend and my brother. Sister Vini, good morning, Sister Vini. Friends, too many, too many to name. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All of God's children ought to be able to say amen on today. The psalmist said, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. That means if you got breath in your body today, there ought to be some praise coming out of your mouth on this morning. There ought to be some praise not only in this place, but wherever you are on today. Friends, our God is worthy to be praised. He's worthy of the highest praise. Uh, when you look back over your life and consider all that God has done and continues to do for you, the least you can do is show him some appreciation. The least you can do is give him some glory, honor, and praise. No, I don't know about you, but I don't need the song leader to encourage me. I don't need the preacher to get me excited. I don't need your testimony. I got my own. When I look back over my life, I can see and I know that it was God and only God who's been with me, caring for me, providing for me, protecting me. No, friends, I don't need anyone to put a gun to my head or a knife to my throat to get me to praise God because he's been showing enough good to me. Better than what I deserve, and he's been sure enough good to you as well. Friends, if I die today, God doesn't owe me anything. I owe him everything. Oh, I hope you came to give God some praise on this morning. And what a wonderful day for God's churn everywhere to come together as a family, one body of believers to worship him in spirit and in truth. The psalmist said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord, just to give thanks to the name of the Lord. Friends, I believe it's also a good reason for us to be here today. Friends, I am Evangelist Davis Worley, and on behalf of the saints who worship right here in Sandtown, West Baltimore, Maryland, I pray the peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ upon you all, and I bid you greetings, friends. We welcome you once again to our worship via live stream as our building is nearing the completion of its renovations. So it won't be much longer that we'll be coming to you in uh, uh, this fashion. Things are going to change here in the near future. But as always, friends, it is our absolute pleasure to invite you into our worship, and we are delighted uh, that you have chosen to spend just a few moments of your time with us today. Friends, we know that there are many other things that you could be doing, but God placed it on your heart to visit with us. 
Friends, here in the Church of Christ in Sandtown, we are determined to give God the praise that he and only he so rightly deserves by any means necessary. Here in the Church of Christ in Sandtown, we honor God as we have been taught by example of those before us, according to Acts chapter 20, verse number 7 in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 1 and 2. Upon the first day of the week. Friends, our love for Jesus keeps us strong, encouraged, uplifted, and focused on praising him. No matter the obstacles, viruses, germs, disease, pestilence, or unreliability of men. We know that our God is a conqueror. He's a shield. He's a defender. He's a comforter. He's a mighty warrior. He's king of kings and lord of lords. He hears the cry of, of his children, and he always comes to our defense. First Peter chapter 3, verse number 12 tells us that the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are always open to our prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Friends, our God has never, ever lost a battle, and he never, ever will. Friends, let's pray together on this morning. Let's pray together. The Lord our God and our Father, most holy and eternal in heaven, the one true God, the only God, besides you, Father, there are no other gods. You are the God of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who makes all things possible for us with you. And we thank you, Father, that you are our Father, our God. We thank you for being so loving, merciful, and kind to us, Father. We thank you for being so gracious and, and long-suffering with us, Father. And we thank you, Father, for not exacting your justice upon us, but rather extending your grace. Father, without your son Jesus, we would be absolutely nothing in your sight. So we thank you, Father, for your love and your care for us, that you would send your son Jesus into this world to reunite us with you. And Father, we humbly ask that you would please forgive us of our many sins, for we know that we've had thoughts, we've said something, we've done something, Father, that is not pleasing or in accordance with your will. We come this morning, Father, on behalf of your children all over the world. For we know, Father, that each of us have our various needs, and you know what each of them are, Father. We humbly ask that you would continue to bless us, as only you can, Father, that you would provide for us. Do those things, Father, that only you can do. And, Father, those things that we are able to do for ourselves, help us, Father, to do those things. Father, we pray for the leadership all over this world. We know that you see and and you are aware of everything that is transpiring in this world. This world belongs to you. Father, we just ask that you would please touch the hearts of men. Help them to control their egos, their anger, their frustration, their bitterness, Father. Bring them to the table of conference that they might engage in meaningful discussions to bring this warring, this fighting to an end, Father. We pray for those who have lost loved ones, those who are fleeing in persecution, Father. We pray for those who are just looking for a better way of life. Bless them, Father, we ask. Help us, your children, to extend the arms of love, Father, and offer whatever services we might be able to provide to bring some peace, some comfort, and stability into the lives of those, Father, whose lives have been torn apart. Father, we also pray for the indigent. We pray for those who are incarcerated, 
We pray for those, Father, who are homeless, those who are hungry, those who are suffering from uh, uh, mental uh, instability, those who are in nursing homes and rehabilitation centers, Father, those who are in foster care. Bless them, Father. Help us, your children, again, to reach out to them. And however we can, Father, bring some peace and comfort into their lives. Father, we pray again for this day that you have given us, a day in which we have never seen before, a day in which we can glorify and honor you, Father, collectively. And we pray, Father, that as we continue in this worship service, that our songs of praise, Father, our offering of service to you will rise up to you a sweet-smelling aroma, pleasing and acceptable in your sight. Father, we ask that you would allow your spirit to rest upon us and guide us where you would have us to go. It is in your Son, our Lord, our Savior, our High Priest, and our King, Jesus of Christ's name, that we do humbly pray. Amen. Friends, welcome to the Church of Christ. We want you to relax. We want you to be at ease, be comforted, and find peace for your troubled soul. And friends, please join us now as we worship God in congregational singing with song leaders from all over the Church of Christ as we lift up our voices in holy praise to God in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. I woke up this morning with my
Say that I believe that. Say that we believe that. Say that I believe that we believe that. Yeah, that's all. Get your crown, get your new suit.
sing a song. Yeah, 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 somebody. Oh, oh my. Oh, my king. saints and welcome welcome once again friends friends now is the time for our scripture reading our scripture reading for this morning's meditation comes from the book of john the book of saint john the chapter is 19. saint john chapter number 19 and this morning we'll be examining verses 25 and 26. that's the book of john chapter 19 verses 25 and 26. get your bibles Get your Bibles, get your Bibles, friends. We want you to read along with us at home as I read to you aloud. And friends, I'll be reading from the New King James Version on this morning. And God's Word reads, Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene, when Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, to the hearing but most of all to those who obey his holy and divine word. Friends, let's pray together once again. Let's pray together. Father, we humble ourselves once again beneath your throne of grace just to give you honor, to give you praise, and to say thank you, Father, for another wonderful day uh, that we can present ourselves to you, Father, and just honor you uh, as only uh, you deserve, Father, 
We just thank you, Father, that we are your children. We thank you for your word, Father, which teaches us, guides us, instructs us in the way that we ought to go. And Father, we pray for those who are in our listening and viewing audience, particularly, Father, those who may not have obeyed the gospel message of your Son. Our hope and our desire on today, Father, is that your word will go forth and do that which you have intended for it to do. That one's heart might be pricked, their understanding might be open, and they might ask that faithful question, what must I do to be saved? And Father, we would be remiss if we didn't pray for those uh, in the uh, south of our country here in America, Father, those in the south and in the southwest uh, who have been impacted by the storms, the tornadoes, Father, whose homes and families have been torn apart, Father. Some have lost the life of loved ones and they're in mourning. And Father, we ask that your blessing be upon them, Father, uh, that you comfort them as only you can, Father, and help us uh, to uh, avail ourselves to them, Father, and provide any services that we may be able to, Father, uh, to be a source of comfort to them during this time. Father, we love you. We thank you. We ask, Father, that you would allow your spirit to rest upon us and guide us where you would have us to go. It is in your Son, Jesus, most holy and blessed name that we do humbly pray. Amen. Let the Spirit of the Lord
saints and welcome, welcome once again, friends. Friends, as the old preacher once said, I'm not going to hold you long. But for the next few minutes, I am going to try to hold you strong. Friends, I pray that you realize how blessed you are and appreciate the many wonderful blessings God is bestowing upon you every day. But more importantly, I pray that today, right now, you will commit yourselves to establishing, strengthening, and prioritizing a spiritual relationship with God. Friends, I hope that you will pursue and maintain a true relationship with the Lord, that you will put God first and submit to His will and purpose for your life. My friend, one cannot say that he's a child of God if he doesn't have a relationship with God. Today we want to encourage the sinner, strengthen the faithful, call the erring saint back home, and encourage all to stay home. Y'all come on home. It's time to come home. This morning we want you to consider your relationship with God in Christ and ask yourself, is it where it should be? Do you have a relationship with God? Or are you simply having an affair with God? Is God prioritizing your life? And have you committed yourself to serving Him? First, today many are recognizing and showing appreciation for their mothers. And I want to say Happy Mother's Day to all our women. Happy Mother's Day. Mothers everywhere are being admired and exalted for their many wonderful contributions, and rightly so. Our women are more precious than the finest pearls and rubies. They're great providers. They work hard to care for their families, and I submit to you that women, particularly mothers, are the hardest working people on this planet. Say amen if you can. They rise early in the morning before the break of day to prepare breakfast for the family and are usually the last to eat. They clean and dress the children and start them on their way. Mama leaves early and often works late into the night. Mama is energetic and strong, and in many ways, she's a true superwoman. How she accomplishes all that she does in one day is truly astonishing. Mama's kindness is exceptional and distinct. She's compassionate, attends to the needs of others, and gives of herself in so many ways. Mama. It's a great source of comfort and a supportive friend. She's intelligent and wise. A wonderful counselor. When mama speaks, everybody listens. Mama carefully considers her words, imparting wisdom, love, and compassion. And her instructions are sure. And given all that she does, Mama still ma uh, manages to maintain her regal image and gorgeous attributes. There are few things that men fear, but a woman can bring him to his knees. Say amen if you can. Her power is indescribable. She can melt a man's heart, reduce him to nothing or inspire him to greater heights with just a look, a touch, or a word. Y'all saw Will Smith's response to the look Jada gave him? Say it if you can. She didn't say a word, but he got a message. Proverbs chapter 31, verses 30 and 31 tells us, Charm is deceptive and beauty doesn't last. But a woman who fears the Lord will be greatly praised. Reward her for all she has done. Let her deeds publicly declare her praise. Friends, it's a noble thing that we celebrate our women. And I suppose that's what many will do today. Praise and honor the women in their lives for all that they've done and continue to do. 
So considering the world's celebration for women, but our celebration of Christ, my sermonic proposition for your intellectual consideration this morning is don't forget about mama. Don't forget about mama. Again, on this morning, we examine the eternal writings of the Apostle John, the one whom the Lord loved and perhaps his closest confidant. John chronicled the last moments of the Lord's life, depicting the savage beating he received at the hands of his murderers. How they mocked our Lord by placing a crown of thorns on his head and, a, and draping him in a purple robe. And to further insult and denigrate his deity, his executioners placed a placard on his cross which read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. It was Roman custom to write the name of the condemned person and his crime on a plaque above his head at his execution in three different languages, Hebrew, Greek, and Latin, so that everyone could read the accusation in their own language. They wanted everybody to know who was being crucified and be warned. If we did this to your king, Imagine what we'll do to you. And in our scripture reading, verses 25 through 27, John tells us there stood by the foot of the cross the Lord's mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleopas and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mama and the disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. And he said to his disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. Friends, Jesus endured much in his 33 years. In fact, he did more in 33 years than many of us would do if we lived to be 100. The Lord was focused, faithful, and devoted to serving God his Father. He had a purpose and a vision. He had a plan and a mission. He had an objective and a timeline. Jesus said that he was about his father's business. And he also said that he always did those things that pleased God, his father. Many of us have constructed busy lifestyles for ourselves. And often we don't have, have time for anything outside of our own interests. We're always on the go. But we never seem to be going anywhere. And with all that we try to fit into a 24-hour cycle of time, we never seem to have enough time to finish it all. Some of us have adopted the attitude that time is money. If it ain't about money, we ain't got the time. How sad. How sad. We can become so fixated on our own ambitions that we sometimes forget about what's truly important in our lives. Yes, I need money. Yes, I need a stable career. Yes, I need a home, clothes to wear, food to eat. Yes, my children need braces and my family needs security. Yes, my wife says she needs a pedicure. But what is needed most is a relationship with God. Sometimes we forget what's needed most. Jesus told us to seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything we need will be, will be provided to us. Turn to your neighbor this morning and tell them that God provides. That's right, God provides. And if you're sitting alone this morning, just say to yourself, God provides. Friends, God provides. 
I don't know about your business this morning or, or what goods and services you provide. But whatever it is you do, you can't provide like God provides. God is in the providing business. That's right. God provides good health and strength. God provides a sound mind. God provides safety to the vulnerable. God provides assurance to the insecure. God provides refuge to the refugee. God provides sight to the blind. He provides a way when you can't see a way. God provides answers that your therapist can't. God provides freedom to the captive. In fact, he's our spiritual freedom fighter. He seeks, saves, and restores that which is lost. God provides peace in the midst of your chaos. God provides comfort to the distressed and calm to the apprehensive. God provides opportunities to the disadvantaged and victory to the oppressed. God is a guide for the lost. He provides instructions that lead to the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Not only is God the way, he is also the truth and the light in this dark and dreary world. God provides a home for the homeless, food for the hungry, and living water for the thirsty. God provides life for the lifeless, hope for the hopeless, and faith for the faithless. God is a doctor in the operating room, and he's never lost a patient. God is a defender of the defenseless. He's a lawyer in the courtroom, the only judge who renders righteous judgment and reigns supreme over every court. God's punctuality is perfect and his timing is impeccable. He may not be there when you want him, but he's always an on-time God. Yes, he is. Same as he can. God provides strength when we're weak. God loves the wounded, battered, and bruised. He said, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Friends, God is a father to the fatherless. He's a friend to the friendless, a brother to the brotherless, and a mother to the motherless. He provides rest for the weary and a home for eternity. God provides a future and a hope. Thank God he's not like man. God can never lie. God's word is true, and he is trustworthy, even when we are unfaithful. God remains faithful. And what he has spoken, he will do. Even when you don't think he's present, God is always there, watching over you, protecting you, and providing for you. Although you don't deserve it, God still provides for you because he's a good God, a merciful God, a gracious God, a loving God, a giving and forgiving God who only wants the best for you. God provides everything you need. Although we may be busy, none of us are as busy as the Lord. I know what you think you what you uh, you think what you're doing is paramount. But stop. Stop. Take a moment and consider what is most important. Who is most important and why he is most important. God said, I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods before me. And the same God said, Honor your father and your mother that your days may be long. God told us to put him first. Put him first. But never forget about our parents. He said, honor them. Don't forget about mama. 
we do this because God commands us to, not because man says we should do it. Even today, when so many are remembering mama, and I got to say this, I got to say this, stop relying on other folk to tell you when to celebrate your mama. Help us, Lord. All men don't love God. Some don't even believe in God or his son, Jesus. But they tell you to celebrate your mama. Not all men love their own mama. I'm just keeping it real. But they tell you to celebrate yours. Because some people will capitalize on anything that is important to you. Folks sell Bibles who don't believe in God, but they know you do. And they never miss an opportunity to profit off your beliefs. Who can tell you how important your mama is to you? What man has the authority, the license, the right, the power, the aptitude, the knowledge, or the competency to tell you how much your mama means to you? Help us, Lord. See, your mama, you're her child. You're the one who has a relationship with her. You've been there all along. How can some outsider, some stranger, some eccentric, someone unfamiliar and unacquainted with your familial relationship tell you how, when, and what to do to celebrate your mama. Your mama. Help us, Lord. Look. I don't know about you. But I care for my mother every day. I try not to let a day go by when I don't call her, talk to her, laugh with her, listen to her, and tell her that I love her. In fact, it makes my spirit uneasy if I don't. Consider that some of our mothers have transitioned to be with the Lord. They're no longer here. This time of the year is very difficult for many of us. Some of us wish we could talk with our mother, stop by the house, spend some time with her, celebrate her birthday, be with her on the holidays, enjoy some of those good old home-cooked meals. Some of us wish we could hear her voice and tell her, I love you, mama. Some of us wish we could hear our mother say, I love you, baby. Some of us have never forgotten about mama. Some of us in worship today will tell you, man, whatever you do, girl, don't forget about your mama. Don't forget about mama. I know I'm not talking about you. I get it. I'm not talking about you. But do you know that some folk are blessed to still have their mother and grandmother but won't uh, stop by to see them? They won't check on her, won't take her a meal, won't sit with her, uh, won't take her shopping, uh, won't take her to the beauty salon, won't take her to the doctor, won't take her anywhere. And if they do, they feel inconvenienced. They won't hug or kiss her. Some won't even tell their mama how much they love them. Some folk haven't talked to their mother in years. They've forgotten about mama. Are you that busy? Are you that busy? Is she that much of an inconvenience to you? Do you know that some people will prioritize their friendships, uh, their careers, their fraternities and sororities, even their hobbies over their own mama? Help us, Lord. 
God said, honor them. Honor them. Honor mama. Honor mama that your days may be long. Don't forget about mama. Don't you forget about mama. Do any of us need anyone to tell us when or how to celebrate mama? Should we celebrate mama every day? Pray for mama every day? Think about mama every day? Care for mama every day? She celebrated you. That's right, when you arrived in this world. And every day since then. She prayed for you. She took care of you. She sacrificed for you. She was patient with you. When she wanted a night out with her friends, she thought it better to be with you. When you were sick, mama was there. She stopped everything to take you to the doctor. When you needed love, mama's love overflowed. When you needed comfort, Mama's arms were welcoming. When you needed chastisement, Mama was long-suffering with you. Mama had needs, but she prioritized your needs. When you were in pain, Mama was hurting. When you were in trouble, Mama bailed you out. When you needed a loan, Mama reached into her bosom to give you her last dime. And some of you still haven't paid her back. Say amen if you can. No, friends, there ain't a mother in this world who doesn't think about her churn every day. Every day. If you only think about mama one day out of the year, that means you've forgotten about mama. If you need someone to remind you to go see your mama, that means you've forgotten about mama. If you need someone to remind you to send mama a card, that means You've forgotten about mama. If you need someone to tell you to go and check on your mama, that means you've forgotten about mama. If you need someone to tell you to show mama some love, show mama some love, that means You've forgotten about mama. If you need someone to remind you how wonderful mama is, that means you've forgotten about mama. Don't ever forget about mama. I'm close. I'm close. I told you I wasn't going to be long. Having completed all that he was assigned to do, the Lord's body hung on a cross where our bodies should have hung. His flesh was ripped apart with the, the strikes and the, and the lashes that we should have received. His body was maimed and disfigured from the painful, brutal beating that he took for us. And as his mother looked at her firstborn, battered, mocked, and ridiculed, stretched upon a cross, and condemned to die, I can imagine Jesus staring back at her and thinking how she protected him as an infant, how she fed and clothed him, how she washed and dressed him, how she nursed and provided for him. How she played with him and taught him to walk and talk. Friends of all who cared 
believed, supported, and followed Jesus. No one looking at Jesus on that cross suffered more than his mother. No one suffered more than his mother. And knowing that his time was near, Jesus looked at his mother, the woman who had reared him, the woman who took care of him, clothed, protected, and provided for him, the woman who nursed, fed, and nurtured him when he couldn't take care of himself, the woman who subjected herself to humiliation, the woman who risked her life to bring him into this world. When he gazed upon his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to his mama, Woman, behold your son. And he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. Jesus, in essence, was saying, When I'm gone, Take care of my mama. Take care of my mama. Don't forget about mama. Friends, I know you're busy. I know you're immersed in your personal pursuits. I get it. I get it. But don't get caught up in the cares of this world. Sometimes you can be so focused that you lose your focus. You lose sight of what is most important. Marriages have dissolved because of lack of time and attention. Once emotional detachment occurs, it can be difficult sometimes to repair and restore. Families are torn apart every day by parents who prioritize things outside of the home. Children don't respect, honor, or cherish their parents because they never receive the love and attention needed to help them develop compassion, love, and respect. Don't neglect the important people in your lives. Jesus never did. He never did. Mama was always important to Jesus. Your mama is important to him. Is she important to you? I believe the Lord would tell you. Don't forget about mama. Whatever you do, don't ever forget about mama. That's my message on this morning. I'm out of gas. That's all I got. Don't forget about mama. Friends, I want to invite you to come to Jesus today by telling you he hung on that cross and gave his life a ransom for ours so that we could be freed from our sins and reunited with God. I want to invite you to obey the gospel of Christ and become a child of God today. God won't ever forget about you. You've heard the gospel message. All you have to do is simply believe that Jesus is the Son of God. He came to this earth, died for our sins, was buried and rose from the grave on the third day. Repent of your sins, which simply means that you recognize that you've forgotten about God. You've forgotten about God. How? Well, I'm glad you asked. You haven't been living the way God wants you to live. You know you're not living the way God wants you to. Make up your mind that you want to live right before God. And confess that you believe Jesus is the Son of God. 
And friends, upon making this faithful confession, you must be baptized, which is a, a total uh, bodily submersion in water in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins. And you shall receive the precious gift of the Holy Spirit, which identifies you as a child of God. My friends, you rise from that water a new creature in Christ, cleansed and made whole by the blood of Jesus, having made the proper exchange, death for life, and live the rest of your life a faithful servant to God. Friends, we want you to notice the numbers that are scrolling at the bottom of the screen. Notice the email. Call us, email us, text us. Our operators are standing by right now. Someone is going to respond. We'll take your call. We'll respond to your text or your email. If you just want prayer, call us, text us, email us. We want to pray for you and we want to pray with you. Friends, don't allow this opportunity to pass you by. Call us. We want to help you embrace a God who will never forget about you. It will save your soul. Friends, on behalf of the Church of Christ in Sandtown, West Baltimore, Maryland, I'd like to thank the many Churches of Christ that supported our worship today and thank you for joining us. And friends, if you would like a personal Bible study or have any questions about anything you heard today, contact information for the Church of Christ in Sandtown and other Churches of Christ in your area will be displayed at the end of this live stream. Friends, as always, we encourage you to please visit a Church of Christ near you. Visit a church of Christ near you and you tell them that Brother Worley sent you. And friends, if you'd like to support our mission right here in Sandtown, West Baltimore, Maryland, please notice our GoFundMe page, our Cash App, or our Zelle, uh, and you can make your contribution there. Friends, as always, we encourage you in the Church of Christ all over the world to keep the faith. Don't give up hope and know that God is willing and able to do all things. Friends, I am Evangelist Davis Worley, and until we meet again, God bless, keep, and comfort you and reveal the truth in his word that it might open your understanding and cause you to consider your relationship with God in Christ before it is eternally too late. Be blessed and be safe, my friends. Oh, 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 I got one more. One more No more pain.